Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, July 14th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Planned Parenthood is caught in an undercover video trafficking body parts. A lot of people want attack parts these days. And we analyze the Suicide Squad trailer. What's it really about? I'm just going to hurt you. Really, really. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, we have some shocking video today of a top Planned Parenthood director admitting on film to selling the hearts, livers, and skulls of dead babies. Now, this shocking footage was actually hidden camera video out of Los Angeles. Uh, it's part one of a three-part documentary series from the Center for Medical Progress. And this footage features a Planned Parenthood clinician discussing the practice of selling the body parts of aborted babies, a blatant violation of federal law. And uh, so this is uh, Dr. Deborah Nukatola, and she is the Senior Director of Medical Services at Planned Parenthood. So she's not just some rogue agent out here selling these baby body parts. This is top-down demonic savagery. And you look in this video and you see just how calmly and nonchalantly she is talking with these two um, undercover uh, actors here. It was a male and female couple and she's basically explaining to them over lunch how the procedure goes down and which human organs are most popular. A lot of people want to attack hearts these days because they're looking for specific nodes, A, B, nodes, S, A. I was like, wow, I, I didn't even know. Good for them. Yesterday was the first time she said people wanted longer. I, uh -huh. um, and then, she, but like I said, always as many attack livers as possible. People just want Yeah, livers. People want lower extremities too, which that's, that's simple. I mean, that's easy. I don't know what they're doing with it. I guess they want muscle. Yeah, a dime a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. Some people will actually try to change the uh, presentation so that it's not a vertex. So when it's a vertex presentation, you never have enough dilation in the beginning unless you have a real huge amount of dilation to deliver an intact calvarius. So if you do it starting from the breach presentation, there's dilation that happens as the case goes on, and often the last you can evacuate and intact mm -hmm. So I mean, there are certainly steps that can be taken. So they can to convert to, to breach, for example, exactly. at the start of the exactly. They can under ultrasound guidance, they can just change the presentation. Under ultrasound guidance, they can just change the, the, the presentation. To bring the body cavity out, exactly. contact and all that. So if you do it starting from the breach presentation, there's dilation that happens as the case goes on, and often the last you can evacuate and talk about it. So you see in the video there that the doctor is fully aware that the selling off of mutilated dead baby parts is effectively in violation of a federal law. That law prohibits the sale of fetal tissue procured from partial birth abortions. So this is absolutely disgusting, but the response from some in the mainstream media has been, how dare you try to humanize the procuring of, of tissue and things like that. If you actually go to the Planned Parenthood Twitter, they're like, this is just preposterous. The right wing, they're editing this video and making up stories. And then take a look at the angle that The Hill went with. They say, GOP seizes on video of Planned Parenthood exec discussing transfer of aborted fetal issue. So that's their tweet. And of course, Everyone is like, that's the angle you're going with? This is absolutely disgusting and horrendous. You call yourself journalists. Take a look at some of these tweets. Uh, they say, when media finally gets around to this Planned Parenthood story, it'll be a framed as an attack on the organization. Bingo, nailed it with that tweet. And then they say, if you can't defend Planned Parenthood harvesting organs, 
make the story about the Republicans seizing on it. You're, so you're starting to see how they spin these stories. Uh, this one from Matt O'Brien, he says, GOP seizes on, not PP director seen admitting to multiple felonies and to selling fetal organs for profit. And then uh, the last one here, D.W. Robison breaking, credible news outlet purposefully obfuscates secret human organ market with political BS. And that's exactly what is happening here. They're not focused on the federal laws that are being broken or the inhumane savagery of this woman sipping her Chianti talking about harvesting organs from partial birth abortions, uh, which you see in the video there. I mean, if, if the child is alive at the time and if any other actions are taken at that point to end its life, that is homicide. And so here this lady's admitting, you know, that that's how they're gonna get these organs and sell them. So it's this huge business and uh, it's that is the sickening truth about Planned Parenthood. It's something we've been trying to get across to people and you know, the girls, they come to our uh, events and brag about how they kill their kids and they're just so excited about that. Now, we've got some other stories coming up here all about the name of political correctness. Anything that even offends people now or even appears to be symbols of the Confederacy are being threatened. Now the Atlanta chapter of the NAACP, they're calling for the iconic and intricate stone mountain carvings to be sandblasted off the face of the mountain, wiped from the pages of history. So this carving is the largest bas relief sculpture in the world. It's bigger than a football field and Mount Rushmore. Uh, it was started in 1923 and was not fully completed until 1972. And the figures were completed with the detail of a fine painting. The eyebrows, the fingers, the buckles, even strands of hair were fine carved with a small thermojet torch. Uh, but all of that means little when it's up against the purge of all the symbols of the Confederacy in this aftermath of the Charleston shootings and the hysterical knee-jerk reaction to that. Now the NAACP has also come out saying that they want the stars and bars removed from Alabama troopers' vehicles. That's right, I mean, they're taking this all the way. Uh, the, the NAACP head there in Huntsville said, we need to do a clean sweep, and they mean to do that. So is Mount Rushmore next? Because George Washington and the others, they own slaves. Um, but he says, you know, we gotta do the clean sweep of this. And so obviously this call to remove or destroy anything even remotely connected to the Confederacy is just, absolutely insane. It's a crazed obsession for leftists. And um, it's not going to do anything to combat the problem of the racial divide in the U.S. Now, here is a clip from the Alex Jones show today. Paul Joseph Watson is breaking this down, as well as Larry Elder giving his opinion on the whole situation. So they're now literally calling for it to be sandblasted off the face of this mountain in the name of political correct. This sounds like the Taliban blowing up Buddhist uh, idols. Well, exactly, Alex. I've been saying for months that so-called progressives are moving ideologically closer to ISIS terrorists because for a year, ISIS have been destroying historical statues and monuments that, quote, offend their radical ideology, which is now exactly what's happening with leftists. You know, there was a video um, about a week ago where they did a man on the street thing, this media organization, and they said, you know, Washington, D.C., it's named after George Washington. He owned slaves. Should we rename Washington, D.C.? And the majority of the people who, of course, also think that Beyonce should have the right to ban the First Amendment because of racism said, yes, we should change the name of Washington, D.C. and call it Black City or mixed race city and all these other ridiculous terms. So it's actually getting to that level. Of course, we had a CNN discussion last month in the light of this Charleston shooting where they said, you know, when do we get to the point where we call for the removal of statues of Thomas Jefferson? And Don Lemon and this other host on CNN were having a rational, sober debate about actually yanking down Jefferson statues and monuments in Washington, D.C. So now they're talking about doing the same um, in Georgia, and of course, Memphis City Council, as you re reported, just voted to dig up the dead body of the Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, 
remove, move it to a different location and sell off his statue to the highest bidder. So again, we make the point. Um, this is the translation of this social justice warrior mental illness that's been raging on social media for years and years. Now it's actually translating into law and physical action because politics is downstream from culture. So whatever they set up the cultural narrative to be, which after this Charleston shooting is, you know, any representation of the Confederate flag is racist and evil, they're now translating that into, into actual council votes, legislature votes and laws, which will physically remove from the pages of history this iconic art, whatever you think about it, just as ISIS terrorists are doing uh, across the Middle East. 95% of black voters voted for Barack Obama, and the black economic condition is worse off than when Obama took office. Black income is down. Black net worth has down about a third over the last few years. Uh, the so-called wealth gap between whites and blacks is the widest it's been in 25 years. Um, I, I don't know what more Obama could have done to the black economy other than take a baseball bat to it, and still he is celebrated by black voters. I don't get it. The primary problem in America is not police officers going after black people. It's not the Confederate flag. It is the implosion of the black family. Back in 1965, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. Now, Alex, the number is over 70%. I didn't say this. Obama said it. If you grow up without a dad, you are five times more likely to be poor, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. Do the math. Why are we talking about that? How do we go from nine innocent worshipers uh, in Charleston being murdered by this guy to a discussion about the Confederate flag? It is just bizarre. And in 1963, Alex, four black kids were bombed uh, in Birmingham, and that time, George Wallace was the governor of, of Georgia, the one who said segregation now, segregation forever. Uh, the chief cop was a guy that sicked water hoses and dogs on black people. The Klan was so virulent, uh, they called Birmingham Bombingham because there were two or three bombings just that very week. Fast forward to now, the South Carolina governor uh, is a woman of Indian descent. Uh, one of the two senators is a black person, uh, and we're still talking about racism in America? Give me a break. This is not your grandfather's America, for crying out loud. Well, a historic nuke deal has been made with Iran. Now, this accord is supposedly going to keep Iran from producing any nuclear weapons for 10 years. That'll fly by. And it's also supposed to impose some new provisions for inspections of Iranian facilities, including military sites. Now, let's point out that an estimated $100 billion in Iranian oil avenue has, revenue has been frozen by sanctions, but all of that is now going to, you know, be lifted, and so it'll be a little shopping spree there for, uh, for Iran to go out and buy some more military weapons. So, you know, no big deal there. But the president stated that no deal means a greater chance of more war in the Middle East. So you just got to look at all this hypocrisy there. Now, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has condemned this deal. He says it's a stunning historic mistake. And he also hinted at the use of, of military force, saying Israel is not bound by this deal with Iran because Iran continues to seek our destruction. And of course, let's not forget, <laughs> Iran continues to chant uh, death to America and all of that. So. Obviously, we have some people concerned there in the Middle East, but do you know what will create more war there in the Middle East? How about all of the weapons, billions of dollars worth, that the U.S. is selling there? Now, this is all to ease the Mideast uh, Iran anxiety. The administration and Congress have already approved in May about $2 billion in arms sales to Israel. Uh, and this is in addition to the three billion dollars that we send them every year uh, for their defense. But we've also got billions of dollars in pending arms con contracts to the Gulf. The United Arab Emirates has one valued at 130 million for 1,100 laser-guided bombs, and uh, there's another potential contract for as much as 900 million pending for some high mobile artillery rocket system launchers. Uh, the Saudi government is looking at roughly $4 billion in weapons. So, of course, the U.S. defense contractors are just wringing their hands at this nuclear deal. They cannot wait for all of this to take place because all of these uh, defense contractors are going to make bank. Now, Obama just the other day said, you know what, we're not going to 
take down ISIS with bigger guns. We need to fight them with better ideas. But clearly, that's not what they're doing there in the Middle East. They're arming these countries to the teeth. They say it's so they can fight ISIS and Islamic militants and stuff. Uh, but obviously, when the military-industrial complex is set to make bank, Obama's words of not arming them with bigger guns means absolutely nothing. Sort of how it was twisted when Obama told us that we had to fight ISIS by arming ISIS, those so-called moderate rebels uh, admitted to being aligned with, with ISIS and Al-Qaeda because they had more money. Of course, they joined them after they got all those U.S. weapons and training. Now, coming up, uh, Darren McBreen and Rob Dew are going to be joining me in studio to talk about Suicide Squad, which is actually just part of the plan to acclimate us to accepting the bad guys as being the good guys. Joining me in studio now, Darren McBreen and Rob Dew. We're going to be breaking down some secrets behind some of these upcoming blockbusters set to come out 2016 and, of course, blatant propaganda. What do you got for us? Well, uh, let's see. It's DC Comics is releasing Suicide Squad. It's going to be in August 2016, and there's a big buzz about it because they released the trailer at Comic-Con. Somebody shot it on a cell phone camera and went on the web, and then they said, no, we got to release the real thing. So... Uh, it's, it, that, that's an interesting tidbit. It just shows how citizen journalism kind of makes things happen, keeps the ball rolling. Right. Um, same way with that ISIS green screen video. We show how it's done on green screen. Oh, and now finally we see something that looks like the original ISIS beheading video come out, and it looks like that is shot on a green screen, obviously, something that we talked about a while back. Right. But going back to this, Suicide Squad is where um, you know DC is going to get all their villains and they're going to give them an offer they can't refuse the authorities and turn them into good guys and have them going out doing good things, going tracking down either certain superheroes or fighting different people. And then if anything goes wrong, they have deniability. They go, oh, well, they got out. Hmm. So it's sort of like a, another creation of a false flag, which in one way it's good. It shows people how false flags happen. Uh, you could see that in the Star Wars trilogy, uh, the first three. But, but in this, it's sort of planting the seeds of saying, ISIS, we had to arm ISIS because we had to get rid of Assad. We had to create Al-Qaeda to get rid of the Russians. We always have to create these bad guys to get rid of other bad guys. So right. it's, it's, it's sort of uh, conditioning people to accept that that's okay, that when we create bad guys, it's, it's always for a good reason. That's why we create them. So uh, let's just go to the first clip here, and, and then we'll talk about it. The worst of the worst. Where? Let's just say I put them in a hole and threw away the hole. I want to assemble a task force of the most dangerous people on the planet who I think can do some good. They're bad guys. Exactly. And if anything goes wrong, we blame them. We have built-in deniability. What makes you think you can control them? So, wow. What makes you think you can control them? We're going to take exactly. the worst of the worst, put them out on the street. So we've been asking that. I mean, how, why would you arm them and train them with U.S. military tactics and then not think that it's going to come back to bite the backlash? Make weapons drops. And now these guys are invading Iraq. And, and actually, Alex pointed out that whole plan with ISIS, that they're most likely going to give them a portion of Iraq to kind of appease them. Say, hey, if you guys stop here. We won't go after you. You'll get a couple cities, some oil fields, and you guys can continue to operate, which is not what you should do with these types of people. But it just goes, you know, it's just the same old thing. We arm our enemies so then we can go and have somebody to fight. Wow. And it, and the only people that benefits out of this is the military-industrial complex, which is what's going on with Iran. We're, we're arming everybody around Iran, and now we're going to be arming Iran. Mm -hmm. And it, there's just no end to it. We're, so we got 20 years. for everyone. Yeah, we got another uh, bad guy to fight. <laughs> right. Well, and this is how they control the narrative through movies and television, because we all know people that either friends of ours, neighbors, people that come into our lives that don't necessarily ever read a newspaper or they never watch the, mo uh, the news, yet somehow magically they are forming strong political opinions. And right. you wonder, where do, they, where do they get these political opinions? And after we watch the next clip, I'm going to talk about how we know for a fact that the U.S. State Department and the Obama administration, they are asking movie corporations like Disney and Sony Entertainment to help control the narrative on ISIS and Russia's role in the Ukraine. Absolutely. Yeah, let's go to that next clip. So that's it, huh? We're the Patsies. We're some kind of suicide squad. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. 
I'm just gonna hurt you. So I had to, I had to throw in that little bit yeah, of the Joker because that's, I guess, the third you. incarnation of the Joker that everybody's making a big deal about. And that seems to be where the focus is. Let's talk about the Joker's new look. Mm -hmm. Not about the fact that, you know, the authorities, the people that are supposed to keep us safe, are going to let out a bunch of criminals to do good. Right. And expect them to do good. Well, I really like how they're exposing, like you said, how false flags operate, what what a patsy is. Because, I mean, when people hear that information for the first time, I mean, that's when we had the huge spike uh, in our in our viewership was when people were like, false flag, what is that? Mm -hmm. And and so this movie now, they're going to kind of explain it to people. And well, you hope so. You hope they don't put the spin on it at the end where right. it's, oh, it was a good thing. They actually helped. And, and we really we really need the bad guys and yeah. because they'll do the things that the good guys won't do. And it just kind of justifies everything the CIA is doing, waterboarding people. Well, we got to get to the bottom of this. So they're putting psychopaths in these positions and then expecting us to be happy with their results and go, hey, that's the American way. We torture mm -hmm. people, you know, right. through feeding tubes and Gets waterboarding. Gets the job done. Right. And, and uh, you know, all the other horrendous things that they that they talk about in those torture reports that have come out, you know, with little children and stuff. It's just horrible. And that's not the country we are, so we shouldn't be, you know, promoting that. And then you've got this other movie. It looks like it's going to come out, Rambo, Last Blood. He's going to go fight ISIS. So there's not much coming out about this. I wonder if they will talk about the fact that, we armed ISIS and now that's why they're big. That would be interesting to see if, if Sly Stallone puts that in the script because he has right. a lot of creative control over his movies. And will he put that narrative in there and then he's going in as the rogue guy to to kick some butt and, and stop it. But it's just it's just totally ridiculous. And I, I think, McBreen, you've got a lot of this on, on the propaganda angle. Well, right? and I was just going to say that we know that Sony Pictures is going to chime in. I don't know what movie yet, but we do know that the, the CEO, Michael Linton, who's the CEO of Sony Pictures Entertainment, he was invited to the White House uh, to have dinner and cocktails with Obama and the First Lady. And we have emails from WikiLeaks where the State Department is specifically asking Michael Linton, help us out. Right. Help us control the narrative. We need your help because people have a skewed version of, of how they feel about ISIS. So it's really hardcore proof of what they're doing. And to me, it's it's very significant because this says that the, the U.S. Uh, State Department and the Obama administration, they want to control how you think and what you think about ISIS and how you feel about Russia's role in Ukraine. Right. And remember, I always like to, you know, go through, do a history lesson, but if you look at uh, Project Mockingbird, this was the very, as soon as the CIA was created at the end of uh, World War II, CIA was created, first thing they did, Operation Mockingbird, and that was to embed reporters, to put reporters on the CIA payroll. And as early as the early 1950s, they already had thousands of these guys in all the, you know, uh, newspapers, little, television, and radio. And now that's being legalized channels. to do it domestically. Absolutely. So, but that was then. They stopped doing that. Oh, right. Yeah, of course. No. Yeah. And, and I think what you're going to see na next coming up is is push for mandatory vaccines, how the medical establishment has figured out yep. all our woes and they can help us. We've got this. Uh, there's a California bill, actually. California now wants to be the first state to mandate adult vaccines, criminal penalties for those who refuse SB 792, the first U.S. adult vaccine mandate with no personal exemptions, only medical exemptions approved by a doctor and defined by this right. bill. Yeah. And we've already seen them using uh, like law and order and things like that to push for these mandatory vaccines. Again, controlling and the narrative you, through and seen, media manipulation. And absolutely. you're right. And I have to read this email. It came in today. Um, from, from a mother, and uh, I have recently went through a very scary ordeal. This is why we need to have choice on these vaccines. A special child received a rototech vaccine and became very ill shortly after. He had incessation, which is where your insides actually turn inside out. Your colon starts absorbing the small intestine. It's very horrible, which is very nerve-wracking and scary. I, I, I was a believer in the FDA and CDC, not anymore. This precious little baby got sick. His diaper was full of blood, and he needed emergency intestinal repair surgery. Mm. They had to open his stomach and pull out the small intestines out of the colon. It was a very scary process. The baby had bowel coming up, and his bowels were not working properly. But thank God he made a recovery after doctors took great care of him in the hospital. Yeah, they made a lot of money uh, over that care. Right. Uh, well, although we're not sure about his future intestinal problems. Well, you go and look at the – you just – Search engine, the insert for Rototech vaccine, it even tells you that this vi vaccine virus transmission from vaccine recipient to non-vaccinated contacts has been reported. So even by giving them this, and it also shows that 10% of these kids develop the symptoms of the disease it's supposed to protect you from, which right. is diarrhea. This is all just to stop you from having diarrhea. 10% of the kids who take this vaccine get that. 
Because it's destroying things. their insides. So that's how the, you know, the media works to kind of promote this agenda where the authorities know everything, they know what's best for us, and we don't know anything. We're stupid, and if we question it, we're, oh, conspiracy theorists. Right. So yeah. that's just a little uh, a little lesson there, especially in, in with this vaccine stuff. I mean, that's going to be the next thing they're pushing. So yeah. arming the good guys or arming the bad guys to fight for us is good and mandatory vaccines. That's all going to be coming down the pipe. Right. And we've actually got a story coming up later in the show where they're going to be force force vaccinating uh, or mandatory um, medical care for Dinesh D'Souza. There you go. Uh, you know, right. he yeah. dared speak out against the administration and, and, you know, he's got to go to brainwashing camp like and Soviet become Russia. medicated so he can yeah. have right thinking. Well, all that is coming right up as well as a few reports right after this. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said in a statement, the Defense Department's current regulations regarding transgender service members are outdated and are causing uncertainty that distracts commanders from our core missions at a time when our troops have learned from experience that the most important qualification for service members should be whether they're able and willing to do their job. Our officers and enlisted personnel are faced with certain rules that tell them the opposite. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said a working group formed to study the policy will be led by his personal undersecretary, Brad Carson. It will operate under the presumption so-called transgenders are capable of serving without adverse impact on military effectiveness and readiness unless and except where objective practical impediments are identified. The working group will also look at the possibility of the United States military paying for the medical costs of surgeries and other treatment associated with any gender transition or reassignment. The move toward integrating transgender people into the military has support in Congress and is backed by Representative Adam Smith, ranking Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee. Uh, Chris, I've seen the reports of uh, Secretary Carter's comments. I can tell you that the president uh, agrees with the sentiment uh, that all Americans who are qualified to serve should be able to serve. And for that reason, uh, we here at the White House welcome the comments from the Secretary of Defense. You know, your gender identity, sexual orientation, these things shouldn't matter if you want to serve in the military. If you can do the job and if you can um, contribute to the mission, um, you should be allowed to do that. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Meanwhile, the Daily Mail cites a shocking Heritage Foundation study that the U.S. military has become so depleted under Obama it is now only marginally able to defend the nation. The scathing report claims that decreases in the number of soldiers and naval ships have led to armed forces falling short of President Obama's national security strategy. Obama's aim was to ensure that the country could still fight two major conflicts at once, but the Index of U.S. Military Strength report said that with current funding, this would be problematic. The Quadrennial Defense Review announced last year that the Army would be cut from 570,000 soldiers to 440,000, fewest since World War II. These cuts will affect nearly every Army installation in 2016 and 2017. But there was no mention by the Obama administration to cut the Military Ascension's Vital to the National Interest program, a program created to enlist illegal aliens. What kind of Twilight Zone reality are we in when the President of the United States is openly laying off American citizens while growing an army of illegal aliens? And if that morale killer wasn't enough to insult every American citizen that has fought for our country, Obama is supporting reform to shrink military pensions by 20% and ending the military health care system, TRICARE, in favor of dumping the military onto Obamacare. As this total failure of Obama's commander-in-chief authority rolls out, the cost of the war in Afghanistan is draining the coffers of the Treasury at a rate of $4 million per hour, while the booming black market opium trade's profits skyrocket. I saw a report about three, four years ago where you were in Afghanistan with the Marines where they admit that they're guarding the opium and helping basically produce it. And the argument is, well, this way Al-Qaeda won't get it. Absolutely, literally true. Our encampments were in the poppy field. Uh, they would be the, the harvesting of the crop happened right in front of us. And there I was with the brave Marines at that time in uh, Helmut Province getting shot at 
and they are effectively guarding the uh, the poppy fields. I think it's really a, it's a disaster. It's awful. Impeachment seems to be the only real solution at this point. A president as reckless as this deserves to be impeached at the tail end of his presidency. It would speak volumes to the globalists drooling over what's left of our treasure and our sovereignty. John Bound for Infowars.com. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. Uh, my former manager, I am Bill Hicks. I'm being sarcastic. I'm actually a clone uh, between uh, Elvis Presley and John Wayne. So if, if, if you really want to get into conspiracy theories, I'm a reptoid clone of John Wayne uh, and Elvis, not of uh, Bill Hicks, okay? Let's just get that clear. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, even Texas Monthly asked, am I Bill Hicks? And, I mean, I might look like a third cousin or something. I, I just don't get it. But I know someone that produced some albums with him, kind of like I live in Austin, Texas, so therefore... I must be secretly working for the University of Texas. Well, I know it's about fake conspiracy theories is they never go after real stuff. Like I've said I had family that worked, multiple family members that worked for the CIA. I've thrown stuff out like my family would do stuff like help East German defectors, and I don't know the full detail of that. Or, uh, you know, I had family that, did black op missions in the army. No one ever goes after that and says, see, he's CIA, he, he admitted it, because then it's not fun. You've got to make something up, because then it's like your new creation. It's like you you made a new world of BS. I want to make something clear here. Cass Sunstein at the White House said six years ago they would discredit real media by creating outlandish theories to discredit questioning the system. And some can say I do that. I mean, I get wild sometimes, but I think that's real. People resonate with it, and it gets people thinking. You got to get folks out of their trance first. Well, following the prison break of Mexican drug cartel leader El Chapo, the Chicago Crime Commission has formally given him the title of Chicago's public enemy number one. Now, he was first named public enemy number one in 2013 to highlight how his Sinaloa cartel dominates Chicago's drug trade. The only other figure to have that title was gangster Al Capone in the 30s. See, but everyone, you know, everyone just wants to say Trump is being a racist, bringing up, you know, all of these drug cartel connections and all of that. Now, whistleblower Tosh Plumley was on the Alex Jones show today uh, discussing his own personal experience with El Chapo and the Sinaloa drug cartel members, and he exposed... Uh, some of El Chapo's campaign contributions. There comes a point in the graph where corruption gets so bad that it ends up falling in on itself because things just stop working and, and just start crumbling. And I think we're going to that point, so don't get too pessimistic. Uh, the arrogance of tyrants always begets their fall. Go ahead. Well, I, I agree with you. The sleeping giant is waking up. Uh, I find out out of my travels. Now, you know, we're getting a little scattered out there. You asked me about Carl. Okay, CIA had memos, good good CIA people had memos that this was predictable as much as, uh, hell, even before he got arrested. This has been a planned program. Here's the main reason. There's two drug lords out there that they say we are requesting uh, extradition on them. We have talked about it, but we have not filed formal papers to Mexico. The reason that we have not filed formal papers to Mexico for these two drug lords' extradition is because if they come back and talk to a federal judge, they would tell where campaign contributions went to this country and where and how they bought uh, military weapons from the direct commercial sales program and how they had inside information even before our intelligence operatives got it. So what I'm basically saying here, and I'm going to try to sum it up fast because I know we're short on time by the way tosh that was a year after we broke it even in the chicago tribune and the el paso times that the number two of the sinaloa gang was extradited to chicago he went and told the judge 
I'm national security agent, gave his code. He was actually actually an agent uh, wow. of the CIA, and they, they released him. I mean, that was in the news. That, look, they covered that one up. That's a lower level than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not specific and look straight in the camera and say it. Oh, was that, you know, whatever. Carl Quintero, oh, I know the guy. Chapo cannot afford to make formal requests. All we can do is... Sir, your Skype bro I broke up when you started talking about El Chapo. Did you say you know El Chapo? I, <laughs> I know all those guys in one form or another, put it that way. And they know me in one form or another. And we have a standoff since agreement. We don't, we don't get into each other's ballpark. And I'm not getting in their ballpark, and they're not getting in mine. We're playing a tit for tat out here. Now, what I was getting ready to say, maybe I'm gone, I'm out of school again. Um, I stepped over the line again, but here's the point. Those men cannot be brought to this country, and I'll sum it up just as tight as I can, because if we put them in front of a federal judge, it will be put on the record that they have made campaign contributions into political parties in this country, and they have bought weapons through the open direct commercial sales and finance their cartel with U.S. made weapons. That was almost broken in the uh, Iron, well, not the Iron Cons, but in Fast and Furious and Zimbabwe, also in Chicago, tried to talk to a federal judge and they put a gag order around me, and mainstream media did not cover it. Now, that's how it's played. These guys, it was predictable. And I'm not trying to rant and get up on a soapbox here. I'm just trying to tell you a straight fact. Eyeball to eyeball to you, Alex, on this program. This was predictable. It was known about. The CIA had information that this was an ongoing operation, and they have let those guys out because they cannot afford to file formal papers to Mexico. The mainstream media reports this. They say Mexico does not cooperate with us. We have not made a formal request for either one of those guys. Incredible. It's a CIA drug running, gun running operation. Tosh Plumley, incredible uh -huh. info. We'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you so much. The Jade Helm military exercise is set to begin tomorrow. We will leave you with this in-depth report from Joe Biggs, breaking it down. And of course, we'll update you on the Alex Jones show, as well as bring you some more news Tomorrow night, join us here, 7 p.m. Central. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now we are less than 24 hours away from Operation Jade Helm 1-5 being conducted. Now, there's a lot of things I want to talk about. The fact that the mainstream media continuously tries to demonize InfoWars.com on its coverage of Jade Helm. Well, conspiracy theories are running wild tonight about the Army's plan for a multi-state training exercise this summer called Jade Helm 15. Texas will be simulated hostile territory. Well, that hostile characterization didn't sit well with a far-right radio host in Austin who told his listeners that he had access to the secret document that details a federal takeover in Texas. The fact that so many Americans really just don't even trust the government since the Obama administration has been in place. And it has nothing to do with race. We don't like Bush either. But things have really gotten bad since he has been the president of the United States. And like Ted Cruz said, there's nothing wrong with people questioning the government. That is our right as Americans. We're supposed to question the government because I'll tell you what, our government will question us all the time. So we have to flip that around on them and try and find out what's going on and expose the truth. Now, there's a number of things that the mainstream media has been doing. They say that we try to fear monger, that we're basically giving birth to this paranoid group of Americans about Jade Helm, when in fact they do the exact same stuff except even worse because they have a much larger following. Fox News, CNN, millions and millions of people all around the world watch these places. And in the days coming up to the 4th of July weekend, what did they do? They said there was going to be an imminent attack by ISIS on the 4th of July weekend. That's fear-mongering. They had no proof of that happening whatsoever. And the 4th of July came, and nothing happened. You hear nothing from the entire populace of Americans complaining, hey, why are you guys pushing this? Why are you doing this? But I guarantee you, when Jade Helm comes and goes, and nothing happened, the same thing's going to happen to us. They're going to demonize us again, going, oh, my God, look at these kooky tinfoil hat people that said that there was going to be an overthrow of the, uh, the government and that they were going to take your guns and nothing happened. Oh, my God. Um, 
that's ridiculous because they're doing the exact same stuff. They fear monger more than anybody. Every time you turn on one of those TV shows, it's the most depressing thing in the world. And all we're trying to do is look at these documents and slides and go, hey, this needs to be questioned. This needs to be looked at. And we're not the only people who think that because Governor Greg Abbott of Texas thinks the exact same thing. He's listened to his constituents and is now going to have the Texas State Guard monitoring the Jade Helm 1-5 exercises. You have Chuck Norris coming out saying, hey, if you don't know about Jade Helm, you should. There's a lot of people around the world who are concerned about it, and all eyes are going to be on Texas, Utah, Southern California, and Florida over the next two months to see whether or not there's a takeover or if nothing happens. But there's one thing I can tell you will happen, a conditioning of the people. And that's what we've said since day one. This will be used as a tool to condition the American public to seeing military roaming up and down the streets in Humvees, helicopters flying at night, exercises being conducted. Now, someone inside, special ops, saying that there will be no media access uh, granted to any type of news agencies out there to cover this. But time and time again over the past, media has been allowed to go cover these events. Now, what were they thinking when they released this statement? This adds further speculation to what's going on with Jade Helm. We've already caught the architects of Jade Helm in a lie numerous times. They said that the people, the private landowners, came to special operations and requested that their land be used for an operation that they didn't even know existed. When, in fact, SOCOM came out there, knocked on the door and said, hey, can we use your uh, land and we're going to give you money? They denied giving money, but the mayor of Big Spring, Texas, came out and said, in fact, that the government approached them and also was giving them money. So over the next two months, we're going to be out here covering these stories. We're going to try to go to different locations across Texas, maybe some of the other states as well, to bring you guys up-to-date information. But I want to ask a favor from each and every single one of you out there watching this video right now. If you live in one of these areas where these missions will be uh, conducted, Please get off the couch, go out, grab your camera, go rent a camera, get a, a, a cheap little uh, Polaroid, something, take pictures, and email us at showtipsandinfowars.com with these videos so you can help us get this information out to the people who want to see it. So once again, thank you for watching this video. My name is Joe Biggs with Infowars.com.